Calaroga Shark Media. Hello, I'm Johnny Mac with your daily comedy news. Ricky Gervais has responded to some of the criticism about his upcoming special that'll be out on Netflix on Christmas. In it, Ricky is joking about recording video messages for terminally ill children via the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Ricky's joke, I always start the video the same way. I go, why didn't you wish to get better? What are you, effing R-word as well? That didn't go over well. Ricky has now told BBC Radio 5 Live in the actual skit. I say I've been doing a lot of video messages lately for terminally ill children, only if they are requested. I don't burst into hospitals and say, wake up, baldy. I'm literally saying in the joke that I don't do that, but people have a reaction. They don't analyze it. They feel something. That's what the offense is. It's a feeling. That's why I'm offended is quite meaningless. What do you want me to change? The host discussed a petition that has accrued thousands of signatures calling for Netflix to remove the joke. Ricky responded, good luck. That's what I say to them. Good luck. I'll even retweet it. 99% of it is faux offense. They're not really offended. They just want to be heard. I'll explain. Now you've mistaken the subject of the joke with the actual target. Of the millions of people that watched it and loved it, only a few don't like it. If I give them special attention and try to placate them, I've annoyed the other millions of people that got the joke. They go, no, you've ruined it for us. So I've got a duty to the people that like it and get it. I wouldn't sit down with a heckler, would I? If I'm playing to 20,000 people, I wouldn't stop the show and explain it to them. I ignore them. Ricky adds, particularly with irony and satire, I'm often playing a character, but some people get confused and think that a joke is a window into the comedian's true soul. It's not true. It's a joke. No one does this with puns, do they? Two blokes didn't really walk into a pub. I deal in taboo subjects because I want to take the audience to a place it hasn't been before, even for a split second. Most offense comes from when people mistake the subject of a joke with the actual target. I think that's what the comedy is for, getting us over taboo subjects so they're not scary anymore. So I deal with everything, and I think we second-guess the audience too much. I'm looking forward to watching that one. I've been holding off on publishing my top specials of the year list because I want to include that one. I'd love to include Chappelle as well, but that doesn't come out to New Year's Eve. And I do want to include Gary Goldman, who has a special out today. I'll get to that in a second. I did, as promised, watch Trevor Noah's special. I liked it a lot. It is not the funniest special, but it's really compelling. I find Trevor to be great company. I like the way he thinks. I like the way he explains issues. I just like listening to him speak. I love the voice work that he does. Uh, maybe the special's 10 minutes too long. I wasn't laughing all that much. Again, totally entertained. Loved the special. Was playing on my phone a little bit towards the end. Uh, and the spoiler thing I mentioned yesterday totally worked on me. Trevor, you got me to watch the credits. So right now, plus or minus Ricky Gervais, I have Trevor Noah's special at... Number 13. So better than the roast of Mr. Peanut, which sounds like a dig, but that was actually pretty good. And not as good as Jimmy O. Yang's Guess How Much. I'll go over that full list sometime next week. I expect Gervais will make it, and I also expect Gary Goldman's Born on Third Base will make it. That's out on Max today. In Born on Third Base, Gary Goldman offers up his insights on a range of topics from growing up poor to pretentious suffixes, all with a generous helping of his inventive humor and absurdism. While chronicling his childhood experiences with free school lunch programs and questionable dental care, the stand-up makes an incisive swipe or two at billionaireism. Boing Boing got a screener of it. They say in Born on Third Base, Goldman's playful styles at the forefront with many digressions into silliness, wordplay, and observational comedy. But underneath all that is a very cohesive and even profound story of what it's like growing up poor. For a special as laugh-out-loud funny as this hour is, there are many strong and important public policy points he makes, including messages about welfare reform and shockingly accelerating income disparity. Point Boing adds, if you're going to illustrate your thesis about America's treatment of the poor, why not do it with a long, hilarious bit about Pop-Tarts? Brad Williams also has a special out today. This one on Veeps. Not sure what Veeps is. What's Veeps? Veeps, your pass to live shows. Get unlimited access to live shows, on-demand content, blah, blah, blah. So it's an on-demand service. Uh, looks like there's a subscription where stuff is free. Uh, I randomly clicked on an Imagine Dragons concert, and you could get that for six bucks. So there's some way to watch Brad Williams today if you want. The new hour sees him talk about navigating relationships and everyday life as a little person. I was up in the middle of the night with my dog. That's what my dog's been doing lately. And I'm like, all right, we can go out if you want. And then I was playing with my phone, and I'm like, oh, wow, Conan O'Brien has President Biden as his guest. Conan talked to Biden about Biden's speech impediment. Conan said, my theory is if you stay connected to these things that embarrassed you when you were a kid, whatever it was, speech impediment, anxiety, feeling awkward, not being a good athlete, like my list goes on and on, having weird hair, having a weird name. Biden jumps in and says, I wish I had your hair. I trade you right now if you want. Conan says, you want this hair? It comes off. I'll mail you this wig tomorrow. Sounds like the Manning brothers are not too happy with Kevin Hart. Kevin was supposed to be on the Manning cast on Monday night. Kevin Hart, big Eagles fan. Kevin had to back out due to a last-minute conflict. Hmm. 
On air, Peyton Manning told ESPN Scott Van Pelt, Kevin Hart was supposed to be on, but it's a tall order for him to be on them for the second time, so Kevin's out. Van Pelt said, shots at Kevin Hart. Peyton and Eli Manning then proceeded to mock Houston, Texas quarterback Case Keenum for being Kevin Hart's replacement on the show. Eli said, tonight you're replacing Kevin Hart. It was supposed to be on the Manning cast, but last minute he had a conflict. I really don't have time to prepare for you, so is it okay if I ask you the questions I prepared for Kevin Hart? That's really funny. Keenan said he would get into his Kevin Hart costume by lowering his chair. <laughs> Told you John Oliver went after Elon Musk. Elon Musk, not really amused by all this. What a shock. Elon went on the social media platform. We're all calling Twitter. No one's calling it that other thing. Elon, stop with that. Twitter, 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 Twitter. Elon was on Twitter. A social media user had posted on Twitter a clip of Oliver's segment and wrote, Oh no, how will Elon ever recover? Elon replied with crying laughing emojis. And then wrote, Oliver was great several years ago, but stopped being funny when he sold his soul to wokeness, where humor is basically illegal. What we do in the shadows, you know, the office vampires, it's ending. Starting its production on the sixth season in January, it will be the last season, according to FX. Tonight on CBS, celebrate Dick Van Dyke's 98th birthday. Two-hour special, Dick Van Dyke, 98 Years of Magic. Guests include Julie Andrews, Carol Burnett, Jason Alexander, Rob Reiner, Ted Danson, William Shatner, Martin Short, Jane Seymour, Judd Apatow, Mel Brooks, and Ken Jeong for some reason. That's weird. Musical tributes and songs from Van Dyke's other career triumphs, including Bye Bye Birdie and Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, would be part of the celebration. Dick Van Dyke said, I started with CBS under contract in 1955 with the CBS Morning Show, then the Dick Van Dyke Show, and Diagnosis Murder. Forgot about that third one. I've been with the CBS family for almost 70 years, and I couldn't be prouder. I'm incredibly honored that CBS will be throwing a 98th birthday special for me. Can't wait to be part of the show. Consequence of Sound has named their Comedian of the Year. Who do you think it is? I'll give you a second to think about it. I like their pick a lot. It is Nate Bergancy. They write, he'd never label himself one, but Nate Bergancy's a bit of a business mogul. In addition to his stand-up tours and specials, he hosts the Nate Land podcast. Under the umbrella of his Nate Land company, the core of Nate Land is similar to the core of Bergancy's comedy, humor that everyone across age demographics or media preferences can enjoy together. The thesis there is that it's all clean. Nate smashed the record for Amazon's most streamed original comedy in its first 28 days with 2.9 million viewers, 400,000 more than the previous record holder. I remind you the other day, Chris Rock, I think, got 36 million, some number like that. Jim Gaffigan's Quality Time was the previous record holder. That could just be an Amazon versus Netflix thing. Good pick there. I like Nate a lot. For Comedy.co.uk, Mark Muldoon caught Eliza Schlesinger's show. Mark said she's making worthwhile, but quite familiar points. Mark uses an example of joke about how women say don't actually need to make an effort with makeup to arouse men. Or her claim from some women that they wear makeup and dress sexually for ourselves, not for men. Good, funny social observations, but ones that have already been made fairly recently by UK comedians. Suffice to say, if you're interested in hearing the differences between men and women in modern society, it's certainly a show that's all too happy to explore them. After initial concerns about a lack of original thought, the show does warm up. She's inventive on other social divides, namely the one between millennials and Gen Z, as well as the dilemma women face about whether to get cosmetic surgery as they age. That punchline, it's a difficult choice women have to make. Do you want to look old or weird? Bill Maher has a book coming out in June. It's called What This Comedian Said Will Shock You. In it, Bill Maher revisits some of his on-air commentary. According to the publisher's announcement, Bill Maher reviewed more than a decade of his editorials, rewriting, reimagining, and updating them, and adding new material to speak exactly to the moment we're in. I'll translate there. Hey, you want a book? Yeah, do I have to do any work? Well, yeah, you do. Can't we just reuse stuff I already did and I get money? Um, yeah, I guess. From the Daily Mail, comedian Rosie Jones has hit out at comments about her performance at the Royal Variety Show the other night. Rosie has cerebral palsy, and she revealed she was on the receiving end of some cruel trolling over her performance. On Twitter, which is what everybody but Elon calls it, Rosie said, Thank you for all the lovely messages about the Royal Variety last night. What fun! Less of a thanks to the not-so-lovely ones. On Instagram, Rosie said, So I was on Royal Variety last night, and I just want to make something clear. If you want to write me to tell me I'm not funny, don't, because I don't care. If you want to say that I'm too disabled to be on television or you can't understand me, don't bother. Because again, I don't care. And I'm going to carry on being on your screen with my disabled voice. And that is your comedy news for today. I'll have episodes for you all through the holidays. Not taking a break here. I might pre-tape one. Like, you know, I'm not going to record on Christmas Eve. Let's be real. But I can tell you right now, the Christmas one has a lot of Ricky Gervais material. So if you're in a Ricky, you're going to like Christmas's episode. If you're not in a Ricky, probably won't like it so much. See you tomorrow.